Hello, government students. Today we're going to be going over the uh, unit activity for unit uh, unit four. So it's about immigration as foreign and domestic policy, and about how generally immigration uh, affects not just uh, not just the country that not just our government, our country, the U.S. and people coming into it, but also affects our relationship with various other countries where the immigrants are coming from. Um, so that's what basically this uh, whole assignment is about. Hopefully you've learned quite a bit about immigration throughout this unit and have some opinions about um, why it's a good thing or why it's a bad thing and, and just the pros and cons of immigration in general. That'll help you a lot throughout this assignment. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, part A says people might be motivated to move away from their countries of origin for many reasons, known as push factors. Similarly, people are also drawn to certain countries uh, for many other reasons. These are known as pull factors. In the table below, list a few ideas of what might constitute a push factor for leaving one country and a few ideas for what might be a pull factor for drawing someone into a new country, okay? So think about push factors. Push factors are, are basically reasons why someone might wanna leave their country, all right? So why might someone wanna leave their country that they're from? Okay, so an example might be um, limited um, opportunity Limited opportunities for economic growth. Okay. Uh, in, in original country. Right. So, uh, for example, a lot of people want to move away from a country if there's not much uh, potential for economic growth, both um, as a country and as an individual. Um, so that would be an example of a push factor why someone might wanna leave their country, okay? Another example might be more obvious, perhaps, um, you know, just think about the changing world, the changing world around us, right? Why might someone wanna leave their country? Uh, because they, for religious, religious persecution might be one reason for uh, war factors might be, you know, political inst instability. Um, perhaps, um, you know, they, for climate change reasons, right? Like the place they're living in is now not as habitable, right? It's too hot or it's too um, frequently attacked by hurricanes or, you know, these are various reasons why someone might wanna leave wherever they're currently at. So list a few reasons. I've given you a few. I gave you one example here. And I've also kind of listed a few here and you can go and list those here. Pull factors are reasons why someone might want to come to the United States or some other country, right? So why might someone want to come to the United States? Um, well, there's a lot of various benefits for coming to the United States. One might be for... Um, stable and peaceful um, political conditions. So that's an example of why someone might wanna to come to the United States or just immigrate to another country in general. Um, which makes sense. You might also look at, well, why would someone else want to come to the United States? Well, for economic reasons, again, uh, the economy is obviously a big motivator for people to move. Um, and for work reasons in general, right? Like if they get a job with a United States firm, well, then they might have to use, move to the United States, right? They might come to the United States for um, to be with their family or just move countries in general to be wherever their family is. Um, that's a big reason why people immigrate from one country to another. Um, people might want to come to the United States for um, to get away from various natural disasters or, you know, because the United States generally has pretty stable climate and most of most of it. So that's another reason why some might come. 
right? So these are just very some various reasons and you can include those. Try to write a few um, push and pull factors there. I've given you a few and just flesh them out a little bit. Okay. All right, once you're done with that, let's move on to part B. The graph below represents responses of individuals from around the world who were asked to name their most desired destination if they were to immigrate. The United States, with its numerous poll factors, maintains a position as the most desirable place to immigrate around the world. Why do you think that is? Consider what you've learned about the government and economic structure of the United States in this unit and this course, and write three to five sentences explaining your theories about why the United States is a desirable destination for immigrants. So you know how you just wrote some poll factors, why people want to come to the United States? Okay, just take those poll factors and write them in three complete sentences right down here. That's it. Okay, so you can mention that um, why the United States is a popular destination. So the United States is a popular destination for immigrants because dot, dot, dot. Okay, now you have your poll factors you've written above. I just want you to combine those into a three sentence paragraph, okay? Because of political stability, because of economic opportunity, because of stable climate, because of being, um, getting a job offer in a United States firm for, um, you know, various reasons, right? This is still, United States really is the land of opportunity, especially being compared to a lot of other places around the world. Um, People come to the United States for the freedoms that we have here. A lot of places around the world don't have those. Um, so people wanna move where they're not uh, persecuted for religious beliefs, they'll come to the United States. In fact, that's why people started immigrating here in the very first place um, is to have their religious freedoms. Um, that's a big reason why a lot of people came here. So um, that's, those are, just take those pull factors, kind of write them out into uh, three to five sentences. And you can see here, all these places, these are where this is 2010 to 2012. So this is like a decade ago. But um, you can see most people say, oh, United States is their number one where they would want to go um, out of these people that they asked. Um, second place you can see is the United Kingdom, Canada, and so on. And a lot of these places are for the various same reasons, right? They have great economic growth, political stability. There's not uh, wars going on there. Um, yeah, and just generally, um, you know, accepting places where there's freedom. You know, most of these places have, um, are very freedom oriented, democratic. <clears throat> okay, part C. Immigration policy in the United States has changed many times. During certain periods, the United States has instituted policies that place heavy restrictions on immigration. At other times, immigration policy has been more welcoming. As politicians and other policymakers in the United States evaluate immigration policy, debates continue about the appropriate response to the line of people eager to immigrate. In the table below, List a few ideas about the possible benefits of fewer restrictions of immigration, then list the possible challenges that might arise with allowing more immigration. You may wish to do some research if ideas on both sides don't immediately come to mind. So I'm going to give you a few ideas here, but I mean, think about this, right? If, if we didn't allow anyone to come to the United States, right? No one's allowed to come. Uh, no one's allowed to immigrate to the United States. Well, that would cause some problems, but it would also create some solutions. In, on the other extreme, if you just had completely open borders, anybody can come and we'll make you a legal citizen, whatever, anyone from anywhere, okay? Again, that's gonna create some problems, but it's also gonna create some solutions, right? 
ideally you want something what the United States has done in the past and is doing right now is somewhere in the middle, right? We allow some people through, but it's not that easy, okay? And other people get restricted from various countries. Some people are more welcome from other countries and so on and so forth, right? Um, there's a lot of ways to basically become a US citizen and to immigrate to the United States. Usually it's through family or something else, but, um, or getting hired, um, but what are some of the benefits of having people immigrate to the United States or wherever country? Okay, well, think about this. Um, many people that we want to immigrate are skilled workers, right? So we obviously, if there's a skilled worker in another country and they want to move to the United States and they're going to help benefit the U.S. economy and bring uh, a net good to the United States, that would be a reason why we would want them over here, right? So, um, many immigrants have valuable skills um, and education. These individuals will be able to contribute to the U.S. economy um, yeah we just say that that's fine okay so that's one benefit uh, of having immigrants and, and the U.S. has done that a lot honestly is like if you're a scientist a doctor or someone who's highly educated in general um, the U.S. is more likely to allow that person to immigrate to the United States, okay? Another benefit is like uh, reconnecting families, right? So if there's like a family member that's already living here, already a U.S. citizen, um, a lot of times it's easier for them to get their spouse and children and close family members to be able to immigrate uh, in, into the United States as well, right? So um, uniting families. across borders. Right. So that would be another reason, right? Um, immigration also boosts the diversity, right? So think about all the, you know, I live in California and here I can pretty much get a really good, there's really good restaurants of every ethnicity I can think of, right? So I can really get really good um, Mexican food if I wanted to, I can get really good Chinese food, if I wanted to, or Thai food, or um, Vietnamese food, or uh, Mediterranean food. I can get food, really good food from all around the world. And that's a big reason is because of all the immigrants that um, have come from all around the world. And uh, all that culture that we get to enjoy, we get to enjoy all those different aspects um, of other people's culture. So another reason why, it increases the diversity. Um, of the United States, right? Um, the United States uh, has been said it's a melting pot, right? Uh, a melting pot of cultures. In other words, the United States has within it cultures from all around the world because the people who live here are from all around the world. Um, so that's definitely a huge benefit. Um, so Im immigration can boost Diversity, cultural diversity. Um, I should probably say immigration can boost cultural diversity within. what are some challenges? What are some challenges to deal with um, immigration? Why might we not want to uh, just have anyone come over uh, into the United States, right? Um, so one thing is providing for all of these people can be a struggle, right? 
-hmm. perhaps there's not the job market doesn't have jobs for every single individual for everyone that would want to come to the U.S., right? You think that if the U.S. just opened its borders completely, I mean, our population would grow dramatically uh, from immigrants. And perhaps the U.S. Uh, economy, the work sector, isn't properly, um, isn't properly situated and prepared for that kind of influx of people, right? So um, it can be difficult to provide, can be difficult to provide uh, work for everyone who would want to Right. So that's one example, right? What, what might be another challenge? Um, what might be another challenge? Generally overcrowding, right? Uh, like I said, I live in California. The, uh, there's already tons of crowding. Like the freeways are always packed. The cities are always packed. So overcrowding could be a big problem, especially um, if, someone's an if someone's coming over and they're, um, let's say they're not well off, they're poor or whatever, a lot of times they end up coming to the cities and the cities already have a huge homeless problem. Um, that's because we can't provide uh, adequate shelter and food. I mean, we could provide for these people. We could do a better job at it for sure. Um, but it's not an easy problem to tackle. Um, and so having a bunch of more people come in, it makes the exacerbates the problem, right? So that would be another problem is um, many US cities are already dealing with overpopulation. Um, mass amounts of immigrants could make this problem worse. Okay. So um, try to think of another challenge, right? Like how do we provide um, adequate housing for all these people? How do we provide, um, will there be a place for them in the, in the workforce? Kind of already talked about that a little bit, right? Um, you know, Obviously, hopefully there, there's a really good medium that we can use, right? Like if they already have a job lined up in the United States, then it makes it easier for them to immigrate over, uh, stuff like that, okay? But try to think of another challenge if you can, and then try to think of another benefit if you can. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, write a short paragraph explaining how immigration policy could be both a foreign and domestic policy concern. How does immigration policy interact with economic policy? So a couple of things to think about here is kind of what we've already talked about. Um, it's a domestic, so basically you're going to write a short paragraph. So not too much, three or four sentences, okay? But I want you to think about both domestic um, domestic policy. So, in other words, how does it affect the United States? So we've already kind of talked about some of those things, right? Affects the United States in various ways, right? Because people come over, now these people become part of our society um, or citizens of the U.S. How does that affect all of us? How does that affect the U.S. in general? You could also then write a sentence about how it's foreign policy as well. So think about how immigration affects the United States' relationship with other countries, right? So if the United States allows a lot of immigrants from another a neighboring country or a country around the world, um, how does that affect the United States' relationship with that other country, right? Perhaps it increases the, um, perhaps like if a 
US and another country, they have a lot of immigrants going back and forth, you know, people moving from here to there and there to here. Um, then it obviously will help the relationship between the US and that country for the most part, as long as people are coming over legally and it's not a big problem. Um, so foreign policy, it could, you could think about how it impacts that. Okay. I kind of already mentioned that, and then off, and then it could increase trade between those two countries because there's a lot of crossover between the citizens of one and the citizens of the other. Okay. Increase trade, increase hopefully positive relationships, um, but it could also cause negative relationships, right? If people from all one country is, are just moving in mass into the US or, or vice versa, right? You could think about how that might create instability in one country or the other, or both, okay? Also, we talked a lot about the economic. How does immigration policy inter interact with the economic policy? So think about echo economic policy. So think about how this affects the US economy, right? It can affect it in lots of good ways, right? If we get skilled workers here in the United States, especially those that are educated and are going to work um, high-end jobs like doctors and lawyers and so forth, um, the United States wants as many of those people as possible to come to the United States. Makes sense. Why? Because those people contribute greatly to the to the economy. As they're working, they're paying their taxes. People who earn a lot of money pay more taxes too. So that, of course, um, helps the economy in general. Helps with the budget. Helps with all, all that. So uh, it's it's much easier for an educated person to become a U.S. citizen, and, and that's just how that's just how it is. Um, so you can think about those things, how it affects the economy, right? Um, but obviously, if, again, too many immigrants come over and there's no regulation about it, then obviously it could become a problem where we can't provide substantial work for, for the influx of immigrants. So those are some things to think about. So you just write one or two sentences about each of these. I kind of already went over, and if you've been writing the stuff before, then this will be relatively easy. Okay, part E. Recently, political leaders have made efforts to reform the US immigration system, igniting fierce debate. Reform can mean opening the immigration system for a freer flow of people or restricting immigration to smaller numbers, depending on the person's perspective. Read this argument for making immigration more open and this argument, restricting immigration. In your own words, summarize each side's argument in two to three sentences. So just a couple sentences. And honestly, uh, I would suggest reading these articles because um, you're gonna have to write a, a short essay coming up. So if you read these two articles, it might help you formulate your own opinion and uh, get some ideas about how you want to write your essay. So these are the two articles here. So here's this one's talking about making it more open. And this actually, all these quotes are from uh, Ben Johnson, who was the council executive director. This was in 2014, so it's kind of an old, old article, but you could find more recent stuff if you're looking for it, or you could just use stuff from here. So um, you could just read this and in one or two sentences, state what his stance is, right? You can kind of already see just by reading these bold parts, um, what his stance is, right? He says economic benefits, um, ending secure communities, deferred action for uh, parent accountability. Just read these few things and one or two sentences put what he thinks according to this article, okay? And, and it's pretty obvious he already thinks, he thinks obviously that oh, immigration should be more open because that's the link we clicked, right? Okay, then restricting immigration, that's this article here uh, by Jan C. Ting, um, former assistant commissioner of the Immigration and Naturalization Services. And you could read, 
this. And it's just one, paper, one page, but go ahead and read this. Um, and you could kind of already know her stance, right? She wants, she thinks that it should be more restrictive, right? How will we provide good jobs, good education opportunities, good healthcare, good housing for 129 million additional residents, blah, 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 right? So you could already see what she thinks about it, right? If cheap immigrant labor is made unavailable, employers can hire Americans at a higher wage or adopt automation that will create a smaller number of skilled jobs for Americans. Basically saying that, you know, if immigrants come in and take all the low paying jobs, then those low paying jobs won't exist for American workers. Uh, so you can read her more of her argument here and just in a couple sentences state what she thinks. Okay, I already kind of went over some of the key points, but, um, and you can use some of your stuff that you've written above as well. Okay, so by now, hopefully you have a relatively good idea of what you want to write about, whether you're for more, uh, for more open immigration, so uh, easier for people to come and immigrate to the US, or you could write about how immigration should be more restricted. Um, so hopefully you've uh, formulated an opinion. If you're still not sure, that's okay. Just pick a side and write about it. And you can gather more resources, uh, sources for your essay, but you can go ahead and use also these two articles that we looked up earlier, right? So if you're for more open, open borders, more immigration, you could use quotes from this article. If you're for less immigration, more restrictions, then you could use some of the information from this article. But if you're taking information from any article, um, just be sure that you cite it, okay? So for example, throughout your essay, you might write something like let's say I, I want to, I want to uh, reference this article right here. Okay, so I would say, I would say, you know, I'm writing, 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 blah blah blah. Then, you know, maybe I want to reference that article. When I want to reference it, I would say, according to Jan Ting. Um, former assistant commissioner of immigration. I'm not gonna write all that. According to Jan Ting, comma, quotation, and then what she said. So you could take a direct quote. I'm just gonna, hopefully you find a part that you agree, you know, that you want to include in your paper, right? I'm just taking a random snippet, but whatever, okay? And then, and this goes for any article or anything you're citing. Okay, so you want to say where it was from. So I said it was from this person, right? And then I also put the quote here, okay? Now, obviously I just took a random snippet, but you'd want to pick one that supports whatever you're trying to say, whatever your argument is, okay? Then at the very end of your essay, you want to do a works cited. So every article that you uh, cite, you want to make sure to put a works cited at the end, okay? This is so it's not plagiarism. Now, how do you do that? First, you do author, period. Title, title of the article. Okay. Publisher. Okay. Date, so the date of the article. And then a link. If you're using a website, you want to, you have a link. So if I'm going to use this one, the author was Jan C. Ting. Title of the art article: Downsides Downsides of High Immigration. Okay. Publisher. You might not, there might not be a publisher, so you can kind of look. Um, it doesn't really say, this one doesn't really have a publisher or whatever. So don't worry about it. If it has a publisher, like you're getting it from like the New York Times or something, make sure to include that, 
Okay. So whoever the publisher of the article, if you can't find a publisher, don't worry about it. Okay. Then a date. So this is October 16th, 2011. And then uh, a link to the article. Usually I'll do it on the next space down. So I would just take this link, copy. And there you go. So now um, you basically, you say you're using five different articles or three articles throughout your essay. You wanna cite them just like this at the end. And then during your paper, make sure you're saying who the author is, whoever you're quoting from or, um, taking information from, okay? Again, author, title of article, publisher, date, and then the link, okay? So that goes for not just this essay, but all essays you write, you need to reference, okay? Um, well, with that, uh, I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, and, um, if you found this useful, make sure to uh, subscribe if you want to thank me and um, or share it with someone else that you think would find it useful. Well, anyway, with all that, take care and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.